What's up, everybody? My name's Parasite. Welcome back to Over the Top with PSG. Today, we have Manchester City in the second to last game of the Champions League group stage. We are already qualified, so we're already through, but a win or a draw here, and we go top of the group. We qualify top of the group, guaranteed. So it's actually a pretty big match, because there's a pretty big difference between finishing top and finishing second. Normally. Sometimes some teams get upset, and you can get some easier teams as the number two seed, but... For the most part, you want the top seed, and we have the chance to get it. Even if we don't win today, we just have to win next week, and we can get the top seed again. So we're in a pretty good spot, but I want to end it today. I want to obviously I want to beat Man City away from home, though. I would think a draw would be an acceptable result. They drew with us at our place, so kind of would like to go there and draw at least. So yeah, got that coming up. Then we have Nice in the league. We that is at home, so that's nice. But yeah, they're doing pretty well. Nice are in fifth. Even with a point deduction, they have a one-point deduction for unruly fans, I believe. Crowd disorder from Nice, one-point reduction. They're still doing pretty well. So, up there with Strasbourg of all teams, but I, th I think Nice are legit. So, that'll be a good game. Uh, in terms of the games since I saw you, it's gone pretty well. Uh, after that Marseille match, we just went and put six up on Lille. So, that was fun. Herrera with a goal, Di Maria with a brace, Marquinhos, Messi, Icardi, no Mbappe, and we still score six goals. This team's a slight bit good against the defending champs, might I say. We then went to Atlanta and put up five. They put up three. That I kind of wish I showed that game. That game was just crazy. Like free kicks, corners, long shots, everything you want to see was in that match. I mean, obviously, I didn't like it for our defending because allowing three goals is... Is that the first time we've done it all season? That's the first time all season we've allowed three goals. The second highest was two against... Uh, Montpellier. We, whoa, I hadn't thought about that. Our defensive record's pretty dang good in Clermont. So we're getting, conceding two goals against bad teams, but we're also scoring a buttload of goals against them. So that's just our MO, I guess. If it's, you know, if we're low scoring, we, we are strong defensively and don't give them many, if any. If we're high scoring, we're a little bit leaky at the back. Kind of understandable. After that Atalanta match, we played Bordeaux, 1-3-1. They had a man sent off in the 14th minute, so... The fact they scored after a man sent off is pretty disappointing, but we still got the comfortable victory. Mbappe with the brace, Cardi with the goal. cardi has been great. They played Nantes, beat them 1 0. One of those games where it didn't really do much. We had a lot of rotation in there. Paradis came in. Wynaldum was the attack midfielder. Ruben Aguilar. No Sergio, no Sergio Ramos. Rafinha started at the right wing instead of Di Maria. And he put up a 9.1 with like 12 or 13 key passes. So that was kind of ridiculous. We did have Mbappe, but we didn't have Messi. So, didn't have Neymar. Without a lot of our stud players, we still got the win. That's what's most important. I wanted to rest the team a little bit for this Man City match. So, we come in fresh, ready to play with our best lineup we can put out. There's no Coman because of injury. He broke his toe, so he's still out another couple weeks. But other than that, we're at full strength. Mbappe starts up top. Messi in behind. We've changed our... This is our more counter-attacking tactic. Away against Man City, I feel like it makes sense. I've changed it a little bit. I've dropped the attack midfielders, wide attack midfielders, dropped back to the left center mid kind of position, left center attacking mid. I don't know what to call it. This left mid. I've changed moving back to the left mid position. I just wanted to be a little bit more reserved. And I think it's a better shape to defend from than up here. And I think that's kind of the primary concern is defending for this match. I just think it makes a little bit more sense. Picking up the ball deep and running with it in a counter also makes sense to me. So. Yeah, we made that slight change. See if it makes much of a difference. I thought about changing Messi's role in this tactic from a truck Bartista because the team needs to carry him when defending. And I, I, I kind of want to defend a little bit more, but I think it's the link between the midfield, which defends well, and the attack who pushes on the back line as that advance forward. I think it could be useful. I think you could actually do a really well, really good job in the counter as that truck Bartista. He is the main outlet when they look to attack. So. I don't know. I'm going to keep him at it for now. If I notice it's not working, I can change it. Uh, squad wise, we're going with basically our strongest squad. Kim Bembe starts instead of Marquinhos just because he's been in better form. 7.58 in his last five, like all above sevens. He's been fantastic. So he starts next to Ramos. Kimi, obviously. Mendes starts at left back because Sandro's not been great. 6.78 in his last five. So Mendes is going to get the start. Di Maria, Verratti, Herrera. I'm going to rest Wijnaldum for this match. He's not played fantastically well. A lot of those have been an attacking midfield. He hasn't really played a whole lot as a box-to-box. -box, but Herrera's playing well, so 
Messi has to come in. Neymar on the left. Mbappe up top. Ah, this is almost our strong spot we can ever put out. So, yeah, I feel pretty good about it, but it's Man City. Let's do as best we can. Hope for a good result. How about we go out there and show everyone that their recent praise is justified? Go put on a show out there tonight. I have faith in all of you out there. Go out there and make a difference. How guarded do you have to be about complacency considering the differing in form between these two teams? I don't pay any attention to form. They're a good team and we're going to have to work hard for our result. Do you think the first goal here will be crucial? Hoping for a strong start and a positive approach? Sure. Man City suffered a surprising defeat to Leeds United last time out. How does that affect your preparation for this match? Wow, look at their form. Lost three of their last five. Lost to Arsenal, lost to Everton, lost to Leeds, drew with Brentford, and drew with Man United. They are not playing well. They're in sixth place. We'll have to be ready for the inevitable reaction. Their manager won't be happy with their last result, and that can surely and that you can sure, be sure they want to set the record straight as soon as possible. I mean, I'm surprised they're doing that poorly. It's Man City. They're usually ridiculous. So, I mean, that's got to give us a little bit of an edge. Look at our form. Like, we've got Messi, Mbappe, Neymar, Di Maria, our main front four attacking triumph. What's a four called? Three's triumvirate. What's four? Octo. I don't know. That's a good question. Somebody answer it in the comments. First highlight in the fourth minute. It's going to be a throw in for us. Di Maria to Hakimi. Putting in a ball. Back post. Neymar. Let's go, Neymar. Hakimi with a beautiful ball in. Neymar at the back post. Does not miss. We go 1-0 up in the first four minutes of the match. Our first shot I've seen. Nice play by Di Marino there. Into Hakimi. Back post. Neymar. Left or right-footed. Near post. Good finish. That's 1-0 up. That was our first shot of the game, so. <sighs> Ander, what the freak do you think you're doing? You're on a yellow, dude. Why are you sticking a foot in there? I don't know what to make for change-wise. Like, one of these three, I think, this has to come off. Mbappe, Messi, or Neymar. Unless I play Messi as a center mid in a 4-4-1. I don't think that's a good idea. Huh. Got an idea. I don't know if it'll work. I'm going to try it. Messi and Neymar as attacking midfielders. Baratti and Di Maria. I should probably switch around this way. As central midfielders. Play a 4 2 2 1. Maybe even a 4 1 2 1 1. Messi doesn't have to be as defensive here with a defensive midfielder behind him. Him and Di Maria can actually... I think I might try this. Two Mazalas, maybe? Just as advanced playmaker or center mid attack, but... Or deep line play... Messi is a deep line playmaker. Let's go advanced playmaker support. Actually, I don't want to be a playmaker. They're told to shoot less. I don't want that to happen. I want him to shoot as much as physically possible. Shoot less often. No, shoot every single time you get the ball. Mazala... Attack. Di Maria, Mazala, support. He's best at attack. Go Mazala, support. I want Messi to be on the attack. D uh, Verratti, deep line playmaker, defend. Neymar. Just attacking midfielder, attack. I don't, wanna, I don't really want him to be on. I don't know if I want Messi even on attack. We're down a man, so I don't really want to be too overly attacking. Kimi's going to go back on support. Uh, we're going to our... Actually, yeah, I want to change to our possessions. That's going to change everything up. Switch around easily. Mazala support. Mazala support. Back to fielder support. Back support. And we'll go... Do I want to do... Okay. I just made the change, but then I questioned it. Do I want to go control? We have the lead. Or do I want to go counter? I think I'm going to start on control... If we go down, I go to the counter. I don't think I want to play positive. I think I'm going to play balanced in the control mindset. I'm just going to waste time from the 16th minute on. Just waste as much time as physically possible. Uh, let's distribute to the playmaker. 
I don't know if I want to counter press down a man. I'm gonna regroup. I don't see anything wrong with that. I think we can actually get stuck in since it's so early in the match. Usually I don't because it's late in the match and all the players are on yellows. But we don't have any players currently on a yellow, so I think we're gonna get stuck in. I mean now we just need to hold on. Man City have the massive advantage. About sixty minutes or seventy minutes of the match up a man. It looks like they might have equalized in the first five. Please don't be the goal. I, I think he's onside, but yep, it's a goal. Donnarumma, that is shocking. That is absolutely shocking goalkeeper. Goalkeeping, good lord. It hit him in the hands. Like directly at him. It hit him in the hands, and it still went in. It's not like he's diving and it just deflects off the end, off his fingertips. It's like He's standing there like this, and he goes right in his hands and into the goal. And now we're down. Ender Herrera, I might just sell him. You do not do that in a match this big. Like you cannot be sent off in the 14th minute of a match this large and not and think you can ever play for this club again. I gotta go counter. We gotta. We need a goal. Do I sit deep? Even I might even sit lower from my line of engagement to defensive line. Give more space for Messi or for Mbappe to run into. They overturned the deficit in ten minutes. We went down a man. They scored twice in ten minutes. I mean, that's for one. That's kind of shocking from our defense, like Mendez. That is just a horrific clearance. Like, up the pitch, not to the fucking sideline. It's exactly where they want it to be. How about you go up the pitch, you idiot? Dude, this might be bad. Another set piece, of course. And, of course, that goes in. Of course that goes in. They need all the wonder goals they can get. Since we're down a man, they need all the wonder goals they can get. Obviously. Everything they touch needs to go in. Unbelievable. Well, this game's over. Now I just need to win. I mean, do I just shut up shop, go ultra defensive, just so we don't concede any more goals? Because I don't want to destroy our goal difference, which is already pretty bad. After this match, is pretty bad. But really, goal difference shouldn't matter. All we have to do is win against PSV, and we go top of the group. This match will mean nothing. It's obviously very frustrating because Ander Herrera is just an absolute dimwit. We might be at a numerical disadvantage out there. That means we just have to work even harder if we're to get a result. I don't want any of you to quit on the pitch out there. I expect you to work hard. Defense, I'm absolutely furious with what I've seen from you so far. That has been a very pitiful showing. I need to see much better in these next 45 minutes. Ander getting sent off in a match of this importance so early is unacceptable. You're going to have to work a lot harder in training if you're going to earn your spot back in this team. A throw in here in the 48th minute. This this might get ugly. <sighs> I mean, this could be 7, 8, 1. It's Man City. We're down a man for the entire match. It's Man City. There's a penalty. It's going to be 4-1. I don't think Hakimi even moved, to be fair. He literally just stood there. Sterling jumped into him, and they called a foul on Hakimi. Like, that's at least what the match engine showed me, because that was not a penalty. Like, he literally didn't move any part of his arms or legs or anything. Did he headbutt him and I couldn't see it? Or what? Because, oh, Donnarumma, what a save. Okay, maybe it's not 4-1, but it's eventually going to be 4-1 because they're going to score more. We probably have no chance of scoring a goal. <laughs> yeah, this... This is going to be embarrassing. The fact we've held out this long in the second half is admirable. We're in the 73rd minute. They have a corner. I'm pretty sure like almost all of their goals have come from set pieces so far this game. Fortunately, that one hasn't. Neymar's taking a knock. He's going to come off. Uh, I'm actually going to move either one of Messi or Di Maria into the attacker and fielder role. I think Di Maria's got better defensive attributes than Messi does. Not significantly, but he does have a little bit better defensive attributes. So move Messi up to attacking midfielder. Uh, it's Bruno Quarantan Taliso. That box to box midfielder. Uh, do I want to make other subs? Mendez is 
Uh, also injured and tired of bringing Alexandro. I mean, 6.2 can pin. It's hard to give anyone a lot of flack for being awful because literally everyone is being awful. Hakimi gave away a penalty and is somehow still on a 6.9. I understand not absolutely destroying someone's rating for a pit, like for giving away a penalty like they used to. You still should get at least a little bit of a knock because that was still an idiotic play that handed them a goal. Like, fortunately, Donovan was able to save it, but he basically handed P Man City a free goal, and he didn't get any knock dock to his rating for it. That just doesn't make any sense to me. 83rd minute, I'm getting ready to take some players off. Angel Di Maria gets booked. He might be one I'm taking off, just so we don't get down to nine men. Mars with a free kick. This is probably going to go in. Oh, it doesn't. Luckily, it doesn't. That was set up perfectly for that to go in. They were scoring every banger they could against us. Uh, Messi's coming off. Di Maria can move up. And then we're going to bring on Paredes. Or he can play Mazala. Cinnamon support. It's like his best role, so I'll put him on that. Di Maria's on a yellow, but, I mean, might still take him off. Got, what, two subs left? Like, so many players are tired. Bring in Rafinha. He played really well last time out. And, I mean, I'm not going to risk Mbappe in this match. It means nothing. Icardi can come in. We're not getting back into it, obviously. We're down a man with five minutes left. Down two goals. If we score two goals in the next five minutes, just hand us the Champions League trophy right now. Because that's, you would have to. Like, that'd be, that's an impossible task. At least we have made it through this second half without a complete embarrassment. They actually didn't score in the entire second half. So that's, I mean, you got to give the, the players a little bit of credit there. They were just so awful for that first half. But after they went down to man especially. But that second half, they held on tight. Didn't allow any goals. That's fine. Pippa ends up on a 6.3. You know what? It could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. Boys, I'm proud of your efforts, even if it wasn't to be today. You went out there against a very good team. You gave so much effort in that second half. You kept them out of the net. It's one of the best teams in the world football. Down a man. That's commendable. A disappointing result. In your view, what happened today? Ander Herrera got sent off. Why can't I say that? Additional comments. Our boneheaded central midfielder, also known as Ander Herrera, decided it would be a good idea to, to stick... I don't want to say this. I decided it was a good idea to attempt a stupid tackle on a yellow card, and here we are. That is what I have to say. No comment. Such a disappointing res uh, result today means it's back to the training ground and back to the drawing board for you. Uh, we have a long-term plan that we believe can bring us success. This won't change a th single thing. You can't be happy following a result like in a performance like that. Uh, we had a man sent off. There were good moments, there were bad moments. We'll take the good and we'll try to eliminate the bad. I think we played all right. Not to concede in the second half against literally maybe the second or third best team in this game. That's commendable. That's pretty good. So I'm happy with that. We still have a much better goal difference. All we need to do is beat minnows of the, of the group, PSV, or draw, I think. Yeah, win or draw against PSV and we're through. Top of the group. I think we're going to be okay. After sitting off the 17th minute, I think we did as much as we could expect from this team. So, yeah, I'm not too, I'm not too upset. No serious injuries from the match, which is good. Nuno Mendes out one to three days. Neymar out one to three days. So just bruises for both of them. So we're okay there. Herrera obviously banned for the next match. He might be shadow banned from a lot of our matches going forward because that was unacceptable. I cannot. He, he That's something you cannot do in a match of that importance. You have to be smarter than that. I don't know. On to Nice. And we are back on the day of the Nice match. We did play one game in between, an away game at Saint Etienne. And you might be thinking, okay, what'd you beat them by? 5 1, 4 1, 3 1, 6 1? We lost 1 0. Our second loss of the season. Our second loss we didn't deserve of the season. Ruben Aguilar, I guess, has learned from Ander Herrera because he also got sent off for a second yellow in the 59th minute. And Kazri scored nearly immediately after. It's like, Two matches in a row, we've had a sending off. 
We didn't have a sending off for a single game before then. None of these games up here was there a sending off. But then all of a sudden, Andrew Herrera decides he wanted to do it. And then the rest of the team decides they want to do it. And we lost 1-0. In a game we absolutely dominated. I'm pretty sure we switched goalkeepers at the very first, before the kickoff. Because theirs made 10 saves. Mine made 2. Donnarumma made 2 saves. Green, Etienne Green, if you've heard of him, you are a St. Etienne fan. It's the only answer, because no one in the world should know who this dude is. He made 10 saves. But Donna Ruma, the best young girl goalkeeper in world football, could only make two on three shots. 51% possession, not good enough, but we're down a man for quite a while. 22 shots, 10 on target, zero goals. I know we rotated, but Accardi has been in amazing form. He's got the most goals for the team. Draxler's been pretty good. Wijnaldum's... Okay, he's not been very good, but Rafinha's been pretty good. Wijnaldum's a huge disappointment. He's been very bad. But yeah, it's just awful. And sitting off... like We just didn't do anything afterwards. I tried to go attacking. We literally didn't have a single highlight of ourselves. Even though we had quite a few shots, we didn't have a single highlight. That was frustrating. But now we've got Nice, and I need to see a bounce-back performance. We're going at the very strong team. They are 5th place or 4th place or something up there. Cardi's going to start up top. This might be the strongest lineup we can put out there. Legitimately, this might be the strongest lineup. Because we're missing some players that maybe should be starters. But, like Alexandro, he played a 6.1 last match. Against say 19 he played a 6.1. So yeah, he's fine. He's benched. Uh, Ramos has been awful. 6.6, 6.4, 6.1. Three good games in there, but three horrific games. He's either really good or really bad. So yeah, he's benched. I can't have that kind of inconsistency in this team. Uh, Mendes starts, Marquinhos and Kempembe start. Why not get to start again at box to boxing though? He's been really bad. I mean, I can't really justify starting Pereira. Herrera is suspended, I think. No, he's back of attacking mid this match. I'm not going to start Herrera. Screw that guy. So I know who gets to start. Di Maria, Messi, Mbappe, Cardi. That should score goals. We have, what, 38 goals between our three of our four attacking midfielders and striker? Di Maria is a little bit disappointing only on four. But he's not really the goal scorer. He's, he's more of the creator. So he's done well in that position. But look, look at those goals. We should score goals this match. I know it's Nice. We better score goals this match. Boys, we're favorites here. And I want us to start playing like it. Defense, I'm expecting to see solid defensive work out there. Midfielders, I'm expecting you to take control of the midfield. Attackers, I'm expecting to see quality finishing out there. That is one thing we really need to improve on. What do you attribute your recent good home run to? You can talk about tactics or systems or whatever you want, but it really comes down to how hard you're prepared to work for your rewards. Your team has had a purple patch in front of goal recently. That's got to be pleasing. We scored zero goals last match. You you know that, right? We scored zero. We had 30 shots, scored zero goals. I don't know if that's a purple patch. If it is for you, that's a little disappointing. Has the recent fishing list been particularly challenging? Uh, I don't think it's been tougher than usual because there are no easy matches anymore. Obviously, we lost two terrible teams. No offense, but still, pretty terrible teams. Two losses in a row after we hadn't lost for like two months. They've got Dolberg, Cliver. They've got some good players. Mario Lamina. There's some decent players on that Nice team, so we can't take them lightly. We're down to only nine points ahead of Leon. So we've we've lost a point against them. They must have drawn. We, we lost, obviously. So yeah, need to see a much better performance today. I need to see I need to see some goals. From this front four we have, there needs to be goals galore. And it's gonna be ours. That's the first highlight, fortunately. Kimpembe ends up getting on the ball. Gonna pass it back to Marquinhos. There he goes. He's got room to dribble into the midfield. Pass off to Verratti. Over the top for a card. You gotta score that. Good lord, that was the worst finish I think I might have ever seen. He that like if you told me he's a nice player and he passed it back to the goalkeeper, I would have believed you. That is how bad that shot was. Is like he lofted it perfectly, just fit right in his belly. Like that was horrible. 
need to see better than that. We have to see better than that. Like, Icardi's been great. He's been scoring some really good goals. That is unacceptable. It's a pretty good passing here, though. Between the defense, Kempembe, Marquinhos, up to the midfielders, Verratti, Ronaldo, but he eventually goes over the top for Mbappe. That works pretty well, too. Mbappe, what is going on? What is going on? Somebody explain to me why we can't finish anymore. Mbappe threw on goal. Icardi threw on goal. Both misses. Crossbar. Are we cursed? Is there some voodoo curse on us or something? I feel like there's a voodoo curse. Because we're getting sent off. We're missing one-on-ones. We've not seen that this season. But we've fallen into a bad patch. And we just forgot how to play the sport. Apparently. Seven shots. No goals. Only put two on target. That's not good enough. Not if you're PSG. Spending billions and billions of dollars buying the best footballers, footballers in the world. They got to start at playing like it. They got to start acting like it. Verratti. Ridiculous passing. I need to see more from him. Hakimi. He's been great. Di Maria. Back to Hakimi. Got to float that in or something. Just stop passing it to the near post when there's like three dudes standing in front of the near post. What are you, what are you expecting? Win this ball back, please. Messi. Not the guy you'd expect to win the ball back there. What a ball to Mbappe, though. There we go. That is the finishing I've been wanting to see. What a pass from Lionel Messi. Does any other player in the world make that pass? I mean, not to even mention that he got the tackle. Makes the tackle. Takes a touch. Just lofts it towards the back post. Mbappe threw on goal. One touch. Goal. That is what I'm expecting from some of the best players in the world. Another highlight almost immediately. Kimpembe. Again, it's all starting in our defense. I mean, I got work out with ball to the back. We've got all that all going on. So we that's how we want to be playing. But I don't like the giveaway like that. It seems like we're getting a little impatient. We start off playing between the defense and then eventually gets to like a decent passer like Verratti, good lord. Or Messi, and we just hoof it. It worked for the first goal, but it's that's the only time it's worked. There's the hoof ball. Oh! Mistake by their center back, Tadebo. Cardi's got to be more aggressive there. He literally just stands there and watches. He's like struggling to control the ball. He stands there and watch him. Oh, that's a sending off. See you, Latamba. So we get two sent two red cards in a row. Then they have a red card. It's just red card bonanzas right now. Who wants a red card? It's like Oprah giving out red cards. Oprah might be the ref today, actually. You get a red card. You get a red card. I love it. Now we need to destroy them. Because they're down a man. Like, Man City destroyed us, kind of. They only won by two goals, but they were ridiculously dominant in that first half. So we need to look like it this rest of this first half and into the second half. Mbappe. Gotta score that one. That's about as easy a goal as Mbappe is going to have all season. Easy shot at the near post. 2 0. Mbappe on a hat trick. About dang time. Team finally starting to look like themselves again. I mean, it, it gets a little bit lucky. I mean, okay, it's, it's very lucky. It's extremely lucky. Sometimes you need luck to get our way. It hasn't hadn't gone our way to start this game, so to finally get it in our in our wheelhouse. I'll take it. They've got Clivert too. I mean, that that's not a bad team. Not a good ball there though. That was not. We might go on another attack to end this first half. What a what kind of pass was that, Bay Maria? I mean, he's got flair, obviously. Just did a spinneruski. I don't know what you're going to call it. Bappe looking for his hat trick. Back to Nuno Mendez. Look at Bappe getting towards the near post. <sighs> looking for the, the ball towards the near post. He finds the ball to Di Maria. I think he's onside. Pretty sure Di Maria's onside there. Bappe's going to get an assist. He's got two goals and an assist. I'm, I'm crediting it right now. I'm pretty sure it's good. I think they gave it. Let's see how close it was. Not a good punch out. Verratti heads it back into Mbappe. It didn't even show up, but he was clearly onside. That's going to be how the first half ends. 3-0 to PSG. I want to rest Mbappe, but he's on a hat trick. So I kind of want to play him a little bit longer. I think he needs a little bit of match sharpness too. So I'll keep him out there. But Messi's probably going to come off. Di Maria might even come off. I don't really have anyone to play instead of Icardi, so probably just make those two changes at halftime. 
They may be a down a man, but don't let your performance levels drop. I want that same hard work and commitment that you showed me in that first half. I want that in the second half as well. Parati pass gets to Mbappe, gets intercepted, stangs on the ball. In a, I'm not even going to try that name. Goldberg with the ball over top. Should be easily cut out by Hakimi. And it is. Di Maria. Di Maria, Verratti, Hakimi. Like the passing play. Cardi. Oh, nearly. That would have been a wonderful goal. What a goal that would have been. They have a throw in here with Hakimi. Into Rafinha. Into Mbappe. Got to score that. There's his hat trick. Mbappe gets his hat trick, and he's going to immediately come off. Uh, who am I going to play out there, though? Because Neymar's tired. I don't really want to risk him getting injured. I don't want to start a game tired. Uh, Georgino Wijnaldum can actually play there. And then Danilo Pereira can come in for Mbappe. That's a good swap. I could actually... I'm going to switch him and Draxler, actually. I think they're better this way. Draxler on the wing. Wijnaldum in attack the midfield. Uh, is he a Trek Bartista, really, though? Not especially. There's attack midfielder on attack. Yeah. Rotate all our good players. Don't risk them getting injured, because this game is over. Another highlight. I, this isn't good for... Nice. Like, more highlights, the worse it's going to get. I don't think they should have many, if any, attacking highlights the second half. Okay, maybe if Marquinhos says he's going to be Neymar and run it through the midfield. Okay. I think you need to remember who you are. You are a center back. Not messy. Hakimi, I trust a little bit more. That's that's not bad. Rafinha. Uh, I mean, it's hard to blame Rafinha there. I mean, he, he got the ball in a pretty bad situation. Like he was, he had guys all around him. He needed to make a quick decision, which he couldn't really make. He was really good that one match before we got on here. He had like 12 key passes. I want to see more of that. I'll take that, though. Julian Draxler goal. Why not him gets the assist? Draxler gets his third goal of the season. An incisive breakaway. A little bit of a sloppy play before it, but this is a nice passing play. Why not him with a great ball through to Draxler and then a very good finish at the near post? It's five. And it might be six. Rafinha with the corner. Oh, yeah, We're not going to score many corners, especially without Sergio Ramos. We just do not have the aerial ability. Rafinha again, though, looking for a low... Oh, goes right to the keeper. Looking for a low cross this time, which is what we are good at. We've got Cardi, who's pretty quick and really good uh, off the ball. Okay, we don't have a whole lot of other goal scorers on the pitch right now, but that's because we don't need them. We do have Messi out there. Obviously, his off the ball is amazing. He's not tall, so... You want to go low crosses for Messi. Same for Neymar. Same for Di Maria. Low crosses just make the most sense for this team, but... Oh, I thought he was going to score that. Oh, that was going to be a great goal. Green deserves it. He's been pretty good. 8.0. He came in at halftime. That's impressive. Like, he has to... I have to start questioning whether he should be starting over... Oh, good goal. Where well, they should be starting over Di Maria right now. Because the form he's been in, I don't know if I can bench him. It, his last two performances have been a 9.1 and in a half of football an 8.0. The second best rating on the team. And it was a goal. Let's go. 6-0. They take Clivert off for Guri, who's another very good player. Wijnaldum, ball to Verratti, takes the touch, gets tackled, but falls to Cardi. A nice Danilo pass. And it's 6. Uh, okay, who else is on the pitch that needs to be subbed off? I'm subbed off. What, four players so far? Three players? I think Verratti probably should come off. Maybe Marquinhos. He's tired and on a yellow. Yago Falke, another good player for Nice. I think he's... I don't think that's a real-life signing, actually. Okay. Uh, Verratti for Paredes. And Marquinhos for Kerr. Or do I bring on Diallo? Kerr needs the match shot. Let's bring in Kerr. And he's right-footed, so he fits there a little bit better. What a great team performance. I know it's... Because of a sending off, but even before the sending off, we were looking pretty decent. Mendes, this might get bad. This might be seven here. In the 70th minute, Kipembe's got to hit that back across, which he does. Oh, easy save for the goalkeeper, though. Put a little bit too close to him. Like I said, our heading ability is not great. Paradise with a good winner there, though. Danilo, who's actually decent in the air. He's probably better than most of our defenders in the air. I think he's like 6'2", decent jumping reach, decent heading. Draxler, not going to quite get there. But yeah, that's, it's not ideal that your best header is in your midfield. Like That's the kind of play where I want a good defender. 
with heading, and that is terrible by Carer. But that is even worse by Goldberg. He should have put that on target at least. That's not you got to put that on target. I know it doesn't mean anything in the end. It's just a consolation goal, but I think they take a consolation. Oh, Draxler nearly gets the interception, and in just the right amount of time, he passes it back to the keeper. Gets it back. Into Bamboo. Robson Babu. I like that name. Bamboo? Bambo? I don't know. Are they actually going to have an attack here? Is, like, is this legitimately a nice highlight? Because unless the game is certainly you know, gone to full get, full match, it is not. This might be a nice highlight. Let's be going a quick, quick counter. It's going to be Gary. He's through on goal. Is he offside? Okay, he was offside. Falke was offside. I was going to say, it, they like blew it dead after he had made the save. Like, as he made the save, almost. I wasn't sure what was going on there, but... I mean, technically, that was a nice attack. This is a PSG attack, which might make it 7. What a goal. What a chip by Mauro Icardi. That is what I expect from Mauro Icardi. That is what he has shown this season. 7-0. We've made all our subs. Now we're just going to enjoy the fruits of our labor. See how many goals we can get. This team is just weird. Like, they score seven or they score none. There's no in-between. They Either they're just unable to score a goal, or they're just going to absolutely trash a team. 34 shots, 15 on target. Only five more shots on target than we had last match, yet we have seven more goals. I know we've got some really good players in this match that weren't playing in the last one. Neymar, actually, Neymar didn't even play. But Messi, Mbappe... Di Maria, who's not really a goal scorer, but he's a creator. Icardi started the match. Obviously, he started the match and scored zero goals as well. He scored two this match, so he's been a lot better today than he was last time out. Nearly gets his hat trick. Has another chance, but both shots get blocked. A little unlucky. I'd like to have double hat trick for this match. And Bappe already getting a hat trick and got off the pitch. I'd like to see Icardi get another one, but beggars can't be choosers. A header! Kim Pimbe's first goal of the season. His first ever goal? Wow. Yeah, he's definitely not good in the air. That's his first ever goal for PSG. He's been here, I feel like, for a while. Is he? Has he always been a P Yeah. Wow. He's played like 123 matches and got zero goals. That's impressive that he's able to go that long without getting a single goal. But he gets one today. I'll take it. It's about dang time. Obviously, I'd prefer if he got in a match that kind of needed the goal a little bit more. Obviously, it's a pointless goal at the end of a match for an 8-0 eight, eight thrashing. But 41 shots to 7. I mean, the fact they didn't score in those 7 shots for on target is kind of reassuring because it seems like most teams score against us willingly. Like, Donnarumma's not been great. Good game today, though. Rafinha, 9.6. How many assists did Rafinha get? Player statistics. How many assists did he get? Where is assists? Uh, where's assists? There's key headers, key passes, clear-cut chances. Four key passes for Mbappe. How many did uh, Rafinha get? Ten key passes. He played a half of football, and he got ten key passes. Two clear-cut chances created. Oh, it's over here. Three assists. Wow. What a half. Bappe with three goals and an assist. Icardi with two goals and an assist. I mean, Di Maria, in comparison, got, what, one goal? Seven key passes. So he got three more key passes in the same amount of time. How can I bench Rafinha? I don't know. A very nice victory. Well done tonight, boys. They may have been down a man, but you still gave it your all. I saw 100% from every single one of you out there, and I love it. No matter the circumstances, I want you to give your all for this team, and we'll do well. Well done tonight, boys. Did you honestly believe you could take advantage of their poor form? It certainly helps our chances if they're struggling, but we still have to do our part, and my players always believe in themselves. Taking everything into account, how big a result is this? Winning breeds confidence. It's as simple as that. And a big win means we've grown confidence and belief. Morale seems really high, really high right now. How far can it take you? This is the sort of thing we need to build on and take advantage of. We can cultivate a strong team spirit. We'll be on something special.
eight nil. What a result! About dang time. Leon have a game in hand. I, almost the entire league have a game in hand, but we're still going to be at least nine points clear. I don't think anyone's going to catch our goal difference even over the course of the rest of the season. I don't think anyone else is going to get plus forty eight by the end of the season. So, I think goal difference are going to be all right. Very good victory, eight nil. Exactly what I've been wanting to see. A good performance, a full performance from our team. Offensively, defensively, we've been great. Now we need to do that against 11 men and against actual good teams. So that's kind of the goal from here on out. In terms of when we'll be back, I'm thinking for this Leon match and maybe Lille. I don't. I kind of want to show Brest because they beat us last time out. I feel like I want to get a little revenge. But I really want to show Leon. It'll be the last you know chance I get to show of them probably unless we don't win the Champions League. Then I guess we'll have next season. But I'm playing like it's going to end this season. That's kind of the, I'm playing this as we're going to win the Champions League. So that's not, that's the only way I can play it. You gotta be, you gotta have high expectations for your teams. So Leon and probably Leal. I don't know if any cup games or Champions League games are gonna be drawn in here. I think the Champions League goes more towards March, but I think that's so. With only three games in March. I think there might be Champions League games in there. So yeah, I expect Leon and Leal. If it's something different, you know, it's you gotta play it by ear. So that's gonna be the end of this episode, though. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next time.